My name is Timothy. I've been a tutor with MCAT Self Prep since 2017, and over my four years of working with the company, I've seen really common mistakes come up over and over again. Today, I want to share with you the five most common mistakes I see pre-med students like you making when you try and prepare for the MCAT. The number one mistake that I see students make is not giving themselves enough time to study. If someone tells me, I want to improve by 10 or more points, and I have a month until my test date, and I have to take it then, it's really, really unlikely that they're going to be able to reach that pinnacle. It is very hard to improve by more than a point a week. From my empirical data, from what I've seen working with hundreds of students, it probably takes 50 or so hours to improve by one scaled point of the, on the MCAT. So what does that mean? You study full time for a week, nothing else going on, and maybe you can improve by a point on a section that you're really putting time into. Still, that's not exactly the most motivational when it comes to short term studying. Studying for two weeks or three weeks could help you see a small improvement, but you need to make sure you're building a long-term study plan to actually see that growth you need. On top of this, you can have a goal score of 510. If your baseline, if your diagnostic exam score is only a 485, you're gonna need hundreds of more hours of studying than someone whose baseline is 500. You need to make sure that you see, this is where I'm at now, take that diagnostic test, and then you can use that Compare that to your goal score and see this is how much I actually need to study. Just because you have the same goal score as your friend doesn't mean you need to put the same amount of study time in. This also can depend a little bit on your personal study style. A tutor can help some students go significantly quicker through their studying. For some students, just having a dedicated plan, knowing exactly what they're doing each week can be enough. But you have to make sure you give yourself the hours needed to succeed on this test. The MCAT will not reward you for studying for a month. The second mistake that I see is something that I fell victim to myself early on in my studying, and that was spending time on Reddit, Student Doctor Network, YouTube, or any other source where I'm not actually learning content or strategies. Now, when I say that, yes, you can read a post from some random person online that says, oh, I got a 528 on my test, and this is exactly how I did it. But you know what? That might not be relatable to you and your situation. They might not be able to explain exactly what they did in a way that's helpful for you and showing you this is the area I need to improve in. It's not personalized help. It might not be relatable. And they're on one extreme of the spectrum. And who are the people that are posting on these forums? It's either those people at the very high achieving end who may not have saw off in the same place as you and know the struggles you're facing, or it's someone who's still facing the same struggles as you and can't really help you through them because they're still fighting the same battles themselves. So, what does this mean? Sure, Student Doctor Network and Reddit, there's a lot of people on there, but they're not gonna be a representative sample. They're not really going to help you, and it definitely won't be the kind of personalized expert help that you could get from a real MCAT expert. I'd recommend usually staying away from one of these resources because they're gonna add a lot of stress to you without really providing much benefit. It really is not worth it to be spending an hour a day or even an hour a week on these forums actually spend that time studying content or doing passages so you can work on your own techniques. You want to be seeing improvement, not just reading about someone else's improvement. Another really common mistake is one that I see with students who have already started studying for a little bit. It's probably their second or third time preparing for the MCAT. And they say, oh, I'm confident in my content knowledge. I got A's in my classes. It's really just the passage reading. That's the issue here. Passage reading could be worth a few points. Passage reading is a skill you have to work on. To do well in the MCAT. If you're scoring below a 510, then there are definitely content holes. If you went through the MCAT self prep quizlet, I would bet you get at least 500 of those no cards or practice questions wrong. If you're scoring below a 500, doing a comprehensive content review is probably called for because there are so many content holes, so many discrete questions that you could be getting wrong that could boost your score. And even in the passages, the questions that are ancillary to the passages main idea and really just testing, did you know this amino acid structure? or which amino acids would be phosphorylated. Knowing those is going to help improve your score so much. I really do recommend setting time aside to do a comprehensive content review if you're preparing for the MCAT. Very rarely is passage reading your only issue, and if you want to see large improvements by double digit points or more, you need to improve your content knowledge base as well. It's not just passage reading techniques and strategies. With that said, delaying your car studying is a really bad idea. That's a section where there is no content to study. It truly is passage reading. And passage reading improvements take a lot of time. 
they are inconsistent. So for some students, it might take 75 hours or even 100 hours of CARS practice to see one scale point improvement. What that means is you need to put a lot of time into CARS and start it now. You can't wait until the final month and say, okay, I'm comfortable with my science content now, let me focus on CARS and I'll see the same rate of improvement. That is highly unlikely. I don't believe that's gonna be possible. Just from all the students I've seen over the years, it is very, very hard to make short-term improvements in CARS. You wanna spend months on CARS. You wanna make it part of your weekly study plan doing it a couple of times a week. You really want to make sure that you are spending enough time on CARS to see that improvement that you're looking for, that difference between your baseline and your goal score. It always comes back to that in the first common mistake that we always see. This last common mistake that I see from students is somewhat related to the Reddit and YouTube and Student Doctor Network issues. A lot of time when students go on there, they're looking for some type of gimmicky strategy that will instantly or within a week boost their score by three or four points in a section. If you just learn how to diagnose these CARS questions or learn this question pathology, you're going to do so much better, these online forums might tell you. And there might be a video or two or someone encouraging you to buy their course that says, I will teach you how to diagnose these questions and answer them instantly. Those are not going to work. What that's really doing is saying, even if you don't understand the passage, we think you can guess the question right. If you don't understand the question, its main idea and the author's perspective, how can you expect to get these questions right? It's nothing more than a little bit of gamesmanship and maybe you get one or two extra questions right in your practice the week after you watch these videos. But it is going to severely limit your ceiling because you're not actually addressing the root causes of your low score. You're not actually improving your passage reading or your ability to understand the passage. We need to make sure we fix those fundamental holes so you actually can keep improving instead of seeing a quick little jump in plateauing, if you see a jump at all. It really is not worth doing these gimmicky strategies for a week, two weeks, saying you're not really helping, and then jumping from strategy to strategy like they're different camps. It really is gonna be a waste of your time if you spend a month or two months just trying out three or four different gimmicky strategies. Focus on actually becoming a good reader and improving your ability to understand these CARS passages as you're reading them. That's the real way to guarantee you'll get 80, 90% of CARS questions right. The one other thing to think about is the highest achievers in CARS sections. Are they spending time studying these different CARS question pathologies? No, probably not. There are people who are English majors and who just roll out of bed, take their first practice test and get a 129 or better in CARS. It's not because they studied question types, it's because they were good readers and understood the passages as they read them and could apply it to the questions. It's not about these gimmicky strategies to help you answer questions. It's not about reading the questions before reading the passage. What's the best case scenario there? Do you remember a couple of the question stems so your working memory is limited while you're reading the passage? You're already struggling to understand the passage. That's why you're looking to improve. So if you're limiting your working memory and your ability to store passage information as you read it, that doesn't sound like much of a win to me. I would really, really recommend not trying any of these gimmicky strategies. So, I've told you some of the most common mistakes that I see. What do I recommend you do for the MCAT? Have a common sense study plan. You need to put the hours in to see the improvement. Work on content and passages. For CARS, because it's only passages, you need to put a lot of time in to actually see success there. And most importantly, if you find that you're not improving after hundreds of hours, you feel like you don't know where to go to build a good study plan, then you should probably want to check out MCAT self prep and some of our resources. We have the Create Your Own Study Plan as part of our basic pro membership. That's something that you can get access to for a couple of Starbucks coffees. On top of that, if you really need individualized, personalized help, work with a tutor or someone that has helped other people succeed on the MCAT before. A real MCAT expert, a real MCAT tutor, is going to be able to help you better. They're going to have seen students like you. They have testimonials saying, this is what it's like working with this tutor. This is how they help find my individualized problems, going through passages together, actually having me practice one-on-one -on -one with them, and then giving you sharp, actual practice that you can do to improve. They're going to give you really focused advice and feedback on what you need to do to improve and do better on this test. If you have any questions about anything I've said here, I highly recommend reaching out to MCAT Self Prep.
you can request a free consultation with me or any of our MCAT self-prep tutors, and we'd be more than happy to help you on this journey. Good luck studying for the MCAT.